Hey, what's up? Then welcome back to my channel. Now, last time we learned auto cycle in automobile. Then we discussed each process in auto cycle and how that works in general. So if you haven't watched the last video, so watch that video first. So you will have a basic understanding about auto cycle. So as the exercise, we are going to give you an example today for auto cycle. So you will have a better understanding about auto cycle. So let's get it started. So this is the auto cycle we learned the last time. So if you haven't watched this, so watch the last video first. Then for auto cycle, we are focusing on four processes. One to two, two to three, three to four, and four back to one. One to two and three to four, they are isentropic processes, means the entropy does not change. Since they are isentropic processes, means they are adiabatic process as well, means no heat transfer. And the two to three and four to one, those are four to isochoric processes, means the volume doesn't change. Since no volume change, then the work is going to be zero. So we are going to have an example today to analyze the heat transfer and work of each process and also for the whole cycle. Then let's take a look. Then before we started the example, those are the common formulas that we are going to use. The first law, energy change equals to heat transfer minus the work done. DU equals to DQ minus DW. Then from Claric EOS, DU equals to CV times DT. Then for entropy change from Gibbs equations, then this is the entropy change. And if they are adiabatic processes, then we have the temperature and the pressure relation that you can use right away. Then this is the work for adiabatic process. Then since the media for auto cycle is air, so K is a constant for air equals to 1.4, then you can look up for thermodynamic tables. Hey, we finally got the example, so let's take a look. So it says for an auto engine that we have the compression ratio 20 over 1, and the inlet pressure and the temperature, which is T1 and the T1 over here. So the lowest temperature and the lowest pressure. And also we have the initial volume, 0.5. This is for this one here. Then the highest volume is going to be 20 times bigger than this 0.5 liter. Then the maximum temperature is at T3, which is 1800K. And I calculate the maximum pressure, so which is going to be P3. So this is the maximum pressure of the system and the specific heat transfer of each process, and the specific work of each process, and also the net work done of the whole cycle, and the thermal efficiency of the auto cycle, and also the specific entropy change of each process, and also the specific entropy change of the entire cycle. So let's take a look. So in order to solve auto cycle problems and to calculate the work done and also heat transfer of each process, it's probably better to calculate the temperature and the pressure of each state. So we are going to calculate the temperature and the pressure of state 
one, two, three, four first. So at one, we know everything. We know the pressure and the temperature. So since the media is air, then we know everything for state one. And also for state three, we know the temperature as well. So those are what we know. Then let's take a look at point two. So we are going to calculate the temperature and the pressure at state two. Then since from one to two, it's an isentropic process, then we can use the pressure relation and the temperature relation right away. Then we know P1, this is compression ratio. And for air, K is a constant, which is 1.4. Then we can calculate the pressure P2 and also plug into the temperature relation. We can calculate the temperature P2. So we know P2 and the T2. So we know everything at state two. The next one, let's move to state three. So for state three, we know the temperature, it told us it's 1300 K. Then we are going to calculate the pressure at state three. Since air is the media, so we can use ideal gas law everywhere for auto cycle. Then with ideal gas law, PV equals to RT, then we can calculate P3, as long as we know V3 here, the specific volume at three. So specific volume from two to three, it's an isochoric process. So V2 equals to V3. Then if we know V2, we would know V3. Then at a state two here, we can also apply ideal gas law, PV equals to RT. And remember, we have calculated pressure and the temperature at state two, then we can calculate a V2 here. Then plug in V2 to V3 here, then we know P3. Then by doing this, we calculate P3 and also we know T3. So we know everything for state three. The next thing, we are moving for state four. And from state three to state four, it's another isentropic process. So we can apply this relation for temperature and this relation for pressure. Then V3 over V4, that's one over compression ratio. Then turns out to be this is T4 and for P4. And similar relation then turns out to be it's 178 kPa. Then we know the temperature and the pressure at state four as well. So we know everything for state four. So, so far, we know everything for state one, two, three, four, because we have calculated all the temperatures and pressures. Okay, so the first question was asking for pressure at the state three, which we already calculated. Then the second question is the heat transfer of each process. So from one to two and three to four, they are isentropic processes, meaning adiabatic processes as well. So it means no heat transfer. Then we are going to calculate heat transfer two to three and four to one. So two to three, it's heat in, and four to one, that's heat out. So you expect a positive number from two to three and a negative number from four to one. Then we are going to apply the first law for process for both two to three and four to one. DU equals to DQ minus DW. Then two to three and four to one, they are isochoric processes means no work done. 
And also du equals to cv times dt from caloric eos. Then turns out to be dq equals to cv times dt. It's over here. Then q two to three is cv times temperature difference. And a similar thing for heat transfer from four to one. And since we have calculated the temperature at each state, so we can just plug numbers in. And for air, CV is a constant. Then you can look up the table. Then turns out to be this is the heat transfer from two to three, which is a positive number. And heat transfer from four to one, it's heat out. And it's a negative number. And the next question is asking for the work done of each process. Uh, as we just discussed, two to three and four to one, they are isochoric processes. So no work done. Then from one to two and three to four, they are isentropic processes. And for isentropic processes, we can use this formula to calculate work 1 over 1 minus k times P2V2 minus P1V1. Then, of course, you can plug in P2V2 and P1V1. But if you don't want to deal with all those decimal places, then I would replace PV with RT, then take R out, then you can certainly do more simplification for this term, but I would just plug numbers in and the K and the R, they are both constants for air. Then you can look up the table. Then the temperature we know for both then turns out to be the work from one to two. It's a negative work because volume decreases. Then similar thing from three to four, it's another isentropic process. So this is the work done. Then PV equals to RT. Then we only need the temperature difference. So this is the work done from three to four since the volume increases. So we expect a positive work. Next one is asking for the work done of the whole cycle. Then we can just sum all the work done from each process. Then turns out to be this is the work done of the whole cycle since the cycle is running clockwise. So we expect a positive work done of the whole cycle. Or as the alternate way, we can use the first law for cycle, which the cyclic integral of dq equals to the cyclic integral of dw. So heat transfer equals to work done. Then the work of the cycle equals to heat transfer of each process. Then add them together. It's the similar number. And that's one different is because of the rounding of air. Then the next one is the efficiency of the cycle. Efficiency is what we got divided by what we pay for. So what we got is the work of the entire cycle. So we want to have work out. So it's the work of the entire cycle. And what we paid for is heat in, which is heat transfer from two to three. Then turns out to be it's about 70% for auto cycle. So look, even the theoretical cycle, the efficiency is only about 70%. So no wonder your car's efficiency is still less than 40%.
The next question is asking for entropy change of each process. Then, since one or two and three or four, they are isentropic processes. Means no entropy change. One to two and three to four. Then, next one. Let's take a look at the entropy change from two to three and four to one. Then we can use one of the Gibbs equations. Then plug numbers in the temperature and the specific volume. Then turns out to be the entropy change from two to three is this number here. And a similar thing, entropy change from four to one is the same formula. Then turns out to be it's this number here. Then the last question is asking for the entropy change of the entire cycle. Then you just add all the entropy change from each process. Then ended up to be it's about zero, which makes sense to us because two to three and four to one they are equal opposite and cancelled out. One to two and three to four, there are no entropy difference. Then, if you plug in all the numbers that we have calculated into one of the plotting software, such as MATLAB, then you can plot your result like this. So, from one to two, two to three, three to four, and four back to one for PV chart, and also the TS chart. Then, this is for this example. Then, as the practice, I have a very similar problem for you to solve it. Then the solutions, it's over here. So you can try this problem on your own and see if you can get all those answers. All right, then this is all we have for today's part. Hope you have learned a lot about auto cycle. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.